Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Dan Richard Fishing and today we're going to be talking about the top 10 baits that I plan on using in the spring and summer of 2020. There are no particular order, uh, not a particular brand usually. I'm just going to talk about what style of bait I want to use and uh, guys, if you like this kind of content, if you like me doing these top 10 bait lists and things like that, um, or if you see me use anything or show anything that you guys plan on using that you love to use, smash that thumbs up button for me. And uh, I would also love it if you guys would leave me a comment below and let me know what are your top baits. It doesn't have to be 10, but let me know what your top baits are going to be in the next uh, com couple of seasons. And in the fall, what I'll do is I'm going to ask you guys to tell me what your favorite baits are. And I'm going to do a video, sort of like an MTB challenge, where all I do is I'm going to use the baits that you guys suggest. I'm going to pick them up, give them a try, and see what kind of bass we can catch, okay? So guys, please hit that thumbs up and drop me a comment. Let me know what you think. And uh, uh, let's get this party started, okay? No particular order, let's get going. Now just before we get into the list guys, also one other little note, I will have links in the description below with everything that I mention here, okay? I'll have links to product manufacturers, where to go and buy it, all that good stuff. So if there's anything in this video that you really like and you're like, oh, I wanna buy that, check out the link in the description below. I will link to everywhere uh, that you can buy it. Some of these are from very small manufacturers in the US. Uh, support those local businesses. I'll link to those, to their websites or their Facebook books and you can contact them directly to make any purchases, okay? All right, now let's go get started. All right, we gotta start off with the very first bait that I start throwing in uh, mid-spring or very early summer when uh, bass fee season first opens around here. Now bear in mind, I'm north, right? I'm, I'm sort of like the same sort of schedule as northern New York, upstate New York. Um, up here in Canada, I'm right next to New York uh, State, uh, located in Montreal, where our pre-spawn, the whole spawning cycle for bass is delayed. It's nowhere near what it is uh, in the lower states. So bear that in mind. So for us, post spawn is, can sometimes post spawn goes into late July, if not even sometimes later. I've been fishing in the middle of June, end of June, and we're still pre-spawn in some of the lakes that I fish. So uh, one of my favorite pre-spawn pre uh, fish grabbers is of course the chatterbait. And I love the black and blue, black and blue chatterbait with a black and blue paddle tail swim bait on there with some uh, blue flake absolutely love this this is a three-quarter ounce variety uh, and this of course is an original chatterbait but you know I'm not married to any particular brand but I do love this chatterbait I work this in uh, very dark water especially here in the river in the st. Lawrence uh, in the spring a lot of the snow the rain fall off and all that stuff comes pouring down from from up river and the water is just like chocolate so this thing here has just got that great contrast makes a ton of noise you can see all that beautiful action in the video here with the underwater footage. You can see that it's just an awesome bait to have. Absolutely love it. So this would be my number one pick. It is it is the first thing that I take out when bass fishing season opens here in Quebec in uh, like mid-June. My next favorite bait, of course, is going to have to be the Strike King KVD 300D jerk bait. These are the deeper version of the jerk baits that they have that run, I believe it's between seven and eight feet. Um, absolutely love it. So this particular one here is, uh, let's get it to zoom. There we go. Uh, this particular one's in a shad color. Uh, absolutely love these. Um, and of course, in the video, you can see, you know, I had a clasp on just to show, just so I could put baits on really quick. And you can see when using a clasp, what it does to your action dips the bait down like that. So that's why you never want to use clasps on jerk baits. My rule of thumb is I will not use a clasp on anything with trebles if at any point I have to leave it slack during the action, okay? So a jerk bait is obviously one of those where a jerk bait, you're just gonna lead it, let it go. You don't want the clasp, the clasp to weigh it down and throw off the balance. Whereas a crank bait that I'm just gonna reel in uh, directly, of course, I'm gonna go ahead, I use clasps, I'm lazy, I don't tie everything. Uh, so in that instance, it's great. So normally you do not wanna use a clasp on a jerk bait. Uh, and what I do is, is uh, the warmer the water gets, the faster I increase the action on this. So in the spring, when I first start off, I will actually just give this a couple of twitches and I'll let it sit there between five and 10 seconds and do nothing, or I'll twitch it and I'll let the, the, the current carry it around, give it another couple of twitches, let the current, and something's gonna smash it. And then as, we, as the water warms up, the fish are becoming more aggressive. Well, then I'll go ahead and I will start really hammering on this in terms of the twitch action, very little pauses at all. Uh, and then as we get into the dog days of summer, I'll actually put this away uh, and then I'll pick it back up in the fall. 
then I'll just do the opposite. The more we get into fall, the cooler the water temps, the more and more I slow down the uh, pauses between twitches. Phenomenal bait, and I do love that it gets a little bit deeper than a standard jerk bait. Uh, super sharp hooks, really good quality build. Absolutely love it. So this is the Strike King KVD 300D series of jerk baits. If you guys watch my videos, you will notice one thing that's pretty common. You will almost never see me pick up a crankbait. It is super rare that I use crankbaits, I'm not gonna lie. It's just not a bait that I catch them on. I don't know why, and it's a confidence thing. I don't, maybe I just don't know how to throw them very well. I just don't catch with, uh, with crankbaits very often, but there is a crankbait or a style of crankbait that I absolutely adore, and that is uh, square bill crankbaits. And this here, this is a Rapala uh, series, square bill. This has a really big square on it, so it's got a lot of phenomenal action. Again, in a shad color, which does really well in the rivers that I fish. Um, and I will throw this typically um, where I have some sparse weed cover, and I want this thing to just Nick, nip through the weeds a little bit, or if I want to bounce off riprap, if I want to bounce off of boulders along a shoreline, something like that, and I just want this thing to just deflect off the rocks, uh, this is a great, great tool. Uh, I especially like throwing it at banks. This is a big bank bait for me, and it, 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 it comes through cover really well. Uh, great, great bait. So when it comes to a crankbait that I will tie on, I will use this. I don't use deep diving crankbaits. If I need to go deep, I just feel like there's a lot of other tools that work for me. Like like heavy jigs and things like that. So uh, my next one would be this guy. And you can see what I really love on these is this, it's got a, the rear hook has that one long trailer hook on it, on the treble. And I've actually reeled in several fish um, where the only thing that was holding on was that trailer hook that's on there. So this is a great, great bait. So that would be number three. Okay, number four, let's talk about number four. Uh, and of course, uh, I'm a smallmouth guy, and bear in mind this is gonna cover smallmouth and largemouth, but what smallmouth guy doesn't fish a Ned Rig? You're crazy if you don't. And uh, my current favorite, of course, is the Guggen Baits Rattlin' Ned. These are uh, Ned Rig baits that have a rattle inside of them. It's the only one of its kind, um, and I really, really enjoy this. This, uh, and this is my favorite color as well, which is the peanut butter and jelly color. Um, absolutely great. I just really, really love these. And of course, you can buy all kinds of Ned, you know, Ned baits um, and Ned hooks. You can see in the video here, the idea is that it just plants itself into the bottom of the water. Uh, and the head and the, the actual bait should stick up a little bit more than it is in this video. Uh, and that's because I'm actually using a bait, a, a hook that's too heavy. The Ned hook I have is too heavy a gauge. It's too big. Um, there are other Ned hooks that are actually much, much smaller that you're supposed to use. Uh, I just didn't have one for this video. But uh, yeah, the Ned rig. That would definitely be a number four. I throw this a lot as of last year. Really love it. I'll be using it very heavily this year in 2020. Next up is a very, very specific bait. I'm gonna talk about paddle tails quite a bit, but this particular paddle tail is called a grass kicker, okay? It's made by Z-Man. It's called the Grass Kickers with a Z. And it's uh, using the Elastec, uh, the Elastec technology. Now, if you guys haven't seen these, these baits are like indestructible. Look at the, look how far I can, look at this, I'm holding it by its tail. Like, oh, look at that, that's crazy, right? Uh, these things are indestructible. I have used these and caught 15 pike, one after another on a setup, and it still stays on, it doesn't break, I, it's just insane. It's like, you get rid of it at, only because you wanna try something new. It's the only reason why you take it off. The fish do, do not tear this off. Um, the one disadvantage with this crazy flexibility that it has is any kind of screw lock. So you know those screw locks that you would use that you normally screw into the nose and then clip it onto a hook? It's very difficult, if not next to impossible, to get a screw lock on here. Um, but there is a very specific way that I rig this particular bait, and I do love it, and you can see it there. There is a specific way that I rig it. Let me show you how I rig this bait. Okay, here's how I rig it. So oh, I've, got, I've got a crucial rod here. This is a, this is a medium heavy uh, power rod. I've got a Shimano um, reel on there. And I'm running 25 pound braid with some 15 pound fluorocarbon leader. Okay, so that's what's on this rig. And the way I've got it, let me just pop that off for you. The way I've got this set up, as you can see here, I've got, the first thing that's part of this rig are a couple of bobber stoppers, okay? So you can see that. 
There you go. So you got two little bobber stoppers on there. So you put those bobber stoppers onto your fluorocarbon, okay? And then next up, I've got a skirted punching rig here. So this is a skirted tungsten punching rig. This is a one ounce weight. And I'll show you exactly what they are. These are the heavy metal series tungsten punching rigs that you can buy from uh, Carl's Bait Shop, AKA Mystery Tackle Box. They come in half ounce and one ounce sizes. And I've got these in a whole bunch of colors. This is absolutely my favorite color. I think it's called Alabama Craw. No, Okeechobee Craw. This is Okeechobee Craw, my favorite color. So you tie one of those on there like this. And then I've got a four-aught hook on here. And this is a this is a Gamakatsu super line hook, an EWG, four-aught size, okay? And then I've simply Texas rigged the grass kicker on there like so. There you go. And it's Texposed, so you got your hook right. Let's see if we can get this thing to zoom. There's the hook right there. And then once you've got that all rigged up, you take your bobber stoppers and you bring them all the way here. And then this allows you to swim this like a swim, like a swim bait, like a swim jig, or you can just pop it off the bottom and the tail will stick straight up. You can see the action here in the underwater footage and fish absolutely hammer this. So the, the, the great advantage with this bait is that you can slow it right down and work it through areas very slowly or you can just swim it straight through like a regular swim bait. Um, and what I really, really like about it is the way that this is set up is that it just comes through nice and clean through heavy weed cover. It is a phenomenal weed cover bait. Um, in my last uh, video that I did about the drop shot, uh, I mentioned that I don't use the drop shot. I don't find it very effective in heavy cover and there are other more useful baits to you know work those areas with heavy weed cover and this is it I mean you can just drive this through the slop you can even punch it through pads and it just comes through nice and clean so this is a fantastic rig absolutely love it and I highly recommend it okay so this is always tied on this is definitely one of my favorites Next up is number six. Number six, you're gonna kinda get a, a two for one deal, okay? We're gonna talk about, again, paddle tail baits. And I love paddle tail baits. And I've got two of them here that I'd like to show you. So this is a four inch paddle tail bait. And this is from uh, Champlain Lures. There we go. This is from Lake Champlain Lures and it is in a, I believe it's called Inferno Orange, which is like orange on the bottom and a dark, dark red on top. And I've got a 2.8 inch size right here in smallmouth magic color. Now these two baits I absolutely love. This one is what I use on the drop shot typically in late spring, summer. I'll use this guy in the drop shot. It's a little small, but it still works amazing. And if I wanna go bigger, I've got the same color in a four inch. Um, and I also will go to these sizes here when needed. I'll go to a four inch uh, on the drop shot. But this bait is also phenomenal for trailers. So you can use this for trailers on spinner baits. You can use them on chatter baits, um, or you can just rig it onto a standard swim bait hook like that. There you go, a weighted hook, and you can see how you can work that with some of that underwater sexy footage. And you can see how the, this is just a very versatile bait. You can use it on just about anything. Absolutely love it. So paddle tail swim baits, I've got tons of. And I use them all the time. I absolutely love them. Switch the colors around. Don't be afraid to use more natural colors in that gin clear water and go with contrast colors. It's actually funny. I discovered how effective this is in the St. Lawrence um, when I wasn't doing so well in chocolate water using black baits and things like that. I switched to this color and it was absolute destruction. You can see it in one of my walleye videos that I recorded a few weeks back absolutely phenomenal so paddle tails uh, paddle tail baits number six for sure okay let's get into number seven um, you know it's starting to get warm out there it's starting to get nice and warm it's late June July guess what the fish are doing they're starting to hammer top water who can't go fishing and not love top water so what do I fish I love to use uh, one of my favorites is this Live Target Scott Martin Poppin' Frog. It's a shout out to Scotty. This is the Poppin' Frog, so it's got the poppin', it's got the popper front, and then the regular soft body and skirt of a normal pad crashing frog. 
Uh, I absolutely love it. Now this is the larger size. There is a smaller version that I also really like to use on lakes that have small mouth because then it allows it the small mouth to get it. This is a little too big, uh, but absolutely love them. I would say my only, the only thing I don't like is that when I'm fishing most lakes that have pike and a nasty pike goes off after this and breaks it off, uh, that sucks. And even like a 50, they'll just shred a 50 pound test braid, no problem. So, uh, but yeah, absolutely love these. So this is the live target, uh, Scott Martin pop and frog. Absolutely love it. Highly recommend it. This is my favorite topwater bait of all. Number eight is a classic. You can't, this is something that everybody must have. If you don't have one of these, you're missing out on a classic bait that still works amazing and that's a spinner bait. You gotta have the spinner bait in your arsenal or else you know that's just crazy talk. Good old spinner bait. They come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. I generally like stuff that has white, blue, chartreuse, orange colors in them. Those are generally the ones that I like. Um, they've got this willow blade set up, so I like the willow blades. Unless I'm fishing that, you know, again, that chocolatey water, I will then switch it to Colorado blades to get that added vibration. And one modification I do on all of my spinner baits, you can check this out. See that right here? I've actually taken a piece of heat shrink wrap that's used for wires. I cut a little tiny piece, put it on there and heat it up. And that way it makes it very easy for me to just put this on a clasp and just clip it onto the line or tie the knot. I don't have to worry about it moving around. Just a really nice simple mod. I will often put trailer hooks on here and on the trailer hook I will put a paddle tail swim bait or another one that I really like to put especially in late spring is a curly tailed grub like a white or a chartreuse do extremely well. Um, but yeah, these things are just great. I've been in spots where um, I've got sort of like a big crescent shaped weed line and I'll actually get in front of it and cast it right at the edge of that weed line and bring it towards the boat and I can actually see the dark shapes just pushing right out of the weeds and just destroy these. They're just so much fun. It's a great classic bait that still works amazing today. The fish have definitely not gotten used to them. So spinner bait, absolutely a huge recommendation. You're crazy if you don't have these and something I will continue to use in 2020 for sure. Okay, let's get into number nine. Now, number nine is a bait that everyone has, and I feel like every fisherman, when when things are bad, when things are going really rough, nothing's working, what do you pull out from the rod from the rod locker? Everyone's favorite, the Senko, the stick bait. Uh, and these particular ones that I buy are from uh, are from these guys here. Um, so First Mate Lures is a company that's actually fairly local. It's uh, from my home city of Ottawa, and they are available at local tackle shops. Um, I also do buy Gary Yamamoto's actual Senkos. He owns the trademark, and of course, Gary Yamamoto is a pioneer in the industry. A huge respect for him. He is amazing. I've met him a couple of times. Uh, super, super nice guy. I love how he always has his little dogs on the boat. He's a super good guy. Uh, but these particular ones I bought in a pinch um, when I was up camping. I didn't have any more Senkos, and I just got addicted to this particular color. So this is a copper color with copper flake. It's garlic scented and I just absolutely love these. Uh, this color just seems to do so well on river systems, lakes, dark water, uh, like dirty water, transparent water, really clear water, it doesn't matter. They just work super, super well, I love them. And of course Senkos are so versatile guys, you can use them in so many different ways. Um, again, let me pull out those hooks. You know, you can see here, this is again, the Superline Gamakatsu 4 aughts EWG hooks. You can see the action where you just expose it with no weight. If you need it to get a bit further down, you can of course add a, a punching weight, a small grass weight, that's no problem. You can wacky hook it. Uh, I've got two types of wacky hooks that I like to use. A small 1 8 ounce uh, weighted, it's got a little ball weight on the end of it. You can see it here. I love that particular, and you can see as it falls how the two ends sort of vibrate and wiggle as it falls down. Uh, you can also just use a regular standard wacky hook uh, and that way you get a slower falling action, but I do like that weighted one. Uh, if I want to throw to a bit deeper water and I want to just get get the bait there faster, that's the one that I'll use. Uh, and of course, don't forget, I, you know, I do use the O-rings on these, of course, to, 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 to keep these baits longer, but uh, you know, Senkos, they work so well. I mean, you can even use them on 
like pumpkin head hooks, okay? Uh, if they don't have the most action, I would probably suggest using other things, especially in summer where the fish are super active. You're gonna wanna use worms that have more action, but it's just to show how you can use this thing on, on everything. So good old Senko. You can even just put this on a kid's hook and throw it out and they'll catch fish. It's just so easy to use. And it really is kind of a, a desperation bait. When all else fails, everybody kind of goes to the Senko. So a Senko is of course a must need in, in the arsenal. All right, next up is number 10. Now number 10 is something I've discovered last year. And again, whether you love these guys or hate them, the Guggen Squad baits, the Guggen baits are, are, are actually fantastic baits. Um, you know, I've been following those Guggen guys for a long, long time. I've always enjoyed them. Um, and I wasn't afraid to try out their baits. You can get them at Carl's Bait Shop, much cheaper than what people seem to think. I've had people say, oh, it's $7 a pack. They're like $3.50 a pack, guys. Not that expensive. They are very soft, but the action on them is insane. When I fish with these, the fish just destroy them. They just absolutely annihilate them. Um, I really like the Alabama Craw colors. So this is my favorite color right here. And um, yeah, I mean, I'll fish with these. I'll bring in five fish. And by the time I'm done, they've, you've, all the arms are ripped off, the claws, like the, the fish just tear these apart. And uh, my favorite way to rig it is basically a t the, the same way that I showed you the swimmer, the, the grass kicker. And it's basically the same thing. You've got it on a four-odd hook, Texposed with a Texas rig style weight on here. There you go, you can see that. And usually I'll just put a tungsten, and of course I've got the bobber stopper right there. And I'll fish it two ways. So if I'm uh, if I really want to fish specific spots, or I'm you know skipping this under trees and things like that, which I've done before, overhanging trees because the bass are hiding under there. I'll bring the bobber stopper all the way down. If I want to slow down the fall and uh, I want to make it, I want to make the presentation a lot slower. I'll actually go ahead and move that bobber stopper up a couple of feet, and that way you get that the, the weight sliding, hitting the bottom first, and then the bait sort of trickles down, which you can see here. So. Uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely awesome. By the way, guys, this is a Kistler rod. If you've never tried a Kistler rod, these things are the beast. Anyways, so that's it. So that's number 10. Number 10 is the Bandito Bug from Guggen Baits. Absolutely love this bait. It is by far my favorite bait offered by that company. Uh, just phenomenal bait. All right, guys, you know what? I think we should do a bonus round, what do you think? Number 11, okay, because it's so hard to pick top 10 baits. I mean, there's other baits that we haven't mentioned yet. Uh, one that comes to mind is the Fluke. Uh, an unweighted soft plastic Fluke is also insanely good. Uh, you know, there's just so many. Uh, you know, uh, other other walking baits like uh, KVD Sexy Dog. There's just, there's just so many, guys. Uh, buzz baits, there's just lots. Uh, but these are the ones that I love. But let's do one more that I feel like is the quintessential part of your bass fighting kit, especially for deeper water, heavy cover, where you got a lot of logs and you know a lot of rocks and you, know, you got to get through big heavy weeds, any of that kind of stuff. There is something that I love to use and that of course is just a good old heavy jig with a really thick gauge hook and your weed guard. And of course, you got to top it off with a delicious craw. Uh, and you know they've got those streamline, the streamline head that gets it through rocks and cover without really coming through, coming through nice and clean. And you can see the action on these. And these particular craws are from a guy named uh, Douglas Doug, who runs a company called Draper Soft Plastics. Uh, and I've shown these before, guys. These craws are just absolutely awesome. He even punches little antenna in them. And I've used these on drop shot. I've used these on uh, pumpkin baits, uh, pumpkin heads like this, pumpkin head jigs. These are the pumpkin heads. Uh, you know, and they stick straight up, the claws come up. I've drop shot these in the Caribbean, uh, catching reef fish. It's just absolutely insane. So guys, bonus round is that big old heavy jig with these insane craws from Draper Soft Plastics. I absolutely love them, okay? Uh, so yeah, so that's it. There you go, that's my bonus round. <laughs> So guys, thank you so very much. I really, really appreciate uh, you guys taking the time to watch my top 10. I hope you like these baits. Maybe there's some you agree with, some you don't. Don't forget again, guys, drop a comment below. Let me know what yours are. And uh, be sure to hit that like button if you like this list or if you like any of these baits, hit the like button and let me know that uh, you're into these baits as well. Okay, guys, that's it for today. I will see you on the next episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe, all that good stuff. And we'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace.